the cycle of life is to take it and to give out. So we take in God's word and we read out in prayer. Luke chapter 11, and we're going to look at these very briefly, and then we'll pray from verse 1. It says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, as the Lord Jesus was praying in a certain place, you know, I've asked the question several times, what did Jesus look like in prayer? This is the word of God made flesh. God became flesh. God's word became flesh. The Bible says, as he was, first things first, I don't even think the word has to pray. <laughs> Come on. Hey, think about it. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. What then are you praying about? Everything is at your beck on. Talk to me. If I created all these things, why then do I need to pray? You only ask that question when your ideology, your philosophy, your theology of prayer is based on needs. And so you think there's no need for prayer if I don't have needs. But the word had no need. <laughs> you don't understand this. Oh dear Lord Jesus. Then they turned to Jesus and they said unto Jesus, one of them said to him, he said, Lord, teach us to pray. They never said, teach us to heal. They never said, teach us to perform miracles. They never said, teach us to preach like you do. What amused them and enthused them about his life was his manner of prayer. There was something about his prayer life. And I want you to observe this. It was as he was praying in a certain place. Then when he was done, the Bible says one of them walked up to him and said, there's a lot of difference between you and the Pharisees. You know that Pharisee in the tabernacle who taught us to pray? Uh-uh. This is the one I want. The Pharisees came, oh God, I give tithe twice a week. The Bible says he prayed within himself, the scribe. That's what Jesus said about their prayers. He says, and don't be like the Pharisees who, when they prayed, they had long words, repetitive words. Oh God, thou art that in heaven. Oh, look us not on all of, of our sinists. For thou, God, we are just like dust in your sight. And worms in your glory. But now, oh God, thou shalt have mercy upon these handmaidens of thine, and thou shalt not consume me in judgment. Amen. That was the example they had. But they saw Jesus going, Oh, Father, you know how much I love you. You know how much I love you. How long more do I have concerning this assignment? They saw something different. It's like you with your father. Welcome, sir. And you run into the house. But you see the young girl run into her dad. <laughs> oh God. All this, all this, all this American, American culture in Nigeria. Dysfunctional. So they saw Jesus praying. And they said, oh, teach us to pray. And what was the first thing our Lord said? Our father. He didn't say my father. He was telling them, you've got access to this. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> My goodness. This changes prayer. Glory to God. Prayer is not what you're doing one hour. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? It's a journey of fellowship, of communion with, the, with God, depths in God. And this is available to all of God's children. Tell the person that there is more. Glory to God. You know those that say, I, I don't even like the way they pray. When there's problem, you see the way they will pray. You see the way they pray. It's, it's amazing. I've seen, I've seen the, the, those who say things like, you know, what's the big deal? Why should I? Why, why should I? Why should I? Why should I? When there's problem, it's amazing. You would even go to a juju priest. The juju priest will tell you, walk half naked. 
with all of your education, you carry calabash on your head, naked, everywhere. In the middle of the night, you'd be shocked. And all God tells you to do is pray. 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 Effectual for the prayer is an umba. It's half naked you want to do. <laughs> By the way, there's a special anointing of prayer upon this ministry. There's a special anointing. And if you're sensitive enough, you can catch it. You can catch it. And you know what I love about Jesus? He's very inclusive. He said, our father, my God and your God. So he didn't lift up the gate and shut it behind us. That's why we will never have to bombard no gates. We are going to bombard, bombard, bombard. Get ready to bombard, bombard. <laughs> 20 years ago, School of Nursing Field, I'll never forget it. College of Medicine Field. I went there to pray and I heard prayers I'd never heard before. Cool, a pop, boom, boom, boom. And, and so I went to the fellow, because I haven't taken them more. He said, these are warring tongues. Warring tongues. Sounded like guns. How unfortunate. It says, and he spoke a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. Say that with me. Men ought always to pray. Say that men ought always to pray. Hey, command. He didn't say men should pray. Did you see that? He didn't say men should pray. He didn't say I counsel you to pray. He says men ought. Men ought. Same way you said the AC ought to cool. Right? The same way you said the mic ought to amplify his voice. That's the idea is, if it's not doing this, then it's dysfunctional. So if you're not praying, you're dysfunctional. As far as Jesus is concerned, you ought to pray. It's not what we admonish you to do. You ought to pray. That's what you ought to do. And if you're not praying, what are you doing? Fainting. The word faints, that means to grow evil, to make evil decisions, wrong choices. So you find now that the more you pray, the more right choices you make. Whether or not you plan to make them, but you make them nonetheless. Because prayer synchronizes you with the divine plan and the divine timing. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah, so how are we going to pray? Very simple. If you've got a prayer language, it makes it a lot easier. If you don't, we're going to minister to you. You're going to get filled with the Holy Spirit, all right? Paul said something. He said, I would that men everywhere would lift up holy hands. Yeah. So the first thing you must learn to do in prayer is lift up your hands. Folks have asked several times, is it important that we lift our hands? Absolutely. Absolutely. Your spirit begins to soar. There's something. Now, you try praying this way and you pray this way. David spoke about the lifting up of my hands as the evening oblation, the evening sacrifice. It's important. You, Jesus told us, but he said to us, watch and pray. He didn't say pray and watch. To watch in the Greek means to fix your gaze, your attention. In essence, when you lift your hands, you fix your gaze on the Lord. You're not bothered about the person beside you. You know the reason a lot of people don't get to pray like they ought to pray? Because self is too alive. They're concerned about their mascara and their makeup. They're concerned about the girl that they're looking at in church. Maybe she will think of him as not so big a boy. But how big can you be than when you're weeping in the presence of your father? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus was praying. They said, teach us to pray. There's something different about your prayers. Just like when you see a little child, a girl, who's got a good relationship with her father. A son who's got a relationship with his father. You look at that relationship and you say, I wish I had this. How many of you have ever seen that before? Lift your hands where you are. Yeah, we're praying. You've got the next 20 minutes to pray. If you've got a prayer language, remember we're praying in spirit. We're communing with our Father. Now, just a second. There are a lot of people who wait for prayer points. You don't need no 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 prayer points. What we're doing here is communing with our Father. And as you pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to take you on a journey. God is a Spirit. And Spirit's have language. Did you hear what I said? God is a spirit. And spirits have language. There's a language of the spirit. And that's tongues. Father. So lift your hands where you are and begin to pray in other tongues. All over this auditorium. Begin to pray in the spirit. We're just fellowship with the Lord this morning. 
We're just spending time to fellowship and pray this morning. Gross on the man, the legal school, the man from back, the gets called a passion, the man about the days of so the from back, the gets killed, the man, the gets called the from post, and about that. If you've got to leave your seat, that's fine. If you've got to leave your seat, that's fine. I encourage people walk back and forth, pace back and forth. That helps you. That helps you. That helps you. You pace back and forth. What you fix your gaze on the Lord Jesus. You're not looking around, bothered by what's going on around you. Now, your prayers must be loud enough for you to hear. You've got to hear yourself. It's got to be loud enough for you to hear yourself. There's a newness coming upon your life. Your walk with God. There are those of you that have said things like, Oh, before I got married, I was on fire. There are those of you that said when I was on campus, there was such a fire upon my life. Oh boy, there's fire in this place. There's a newness here this morning. There's a newness coming upon your life. We're going to make fire. We're going to make fire this morning. We're not waiting for fire to come. We're making fire. And how do you make fire? You're going to pray from the depth of your being. Your whole soul. The loudest you can. The fastest you can. The strongest you can. You're going to pray out loud. We've got just a few more minutes, but we're going to make it count. Somebody somewhere begin to pray. Begin to pray out loud where you are. Take your prayer positions. So Ramande, Ego Stala Ande, Jesus, 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 Jesus,